for this podcast, we're proud to partner with Zurich Life and Investments. As one of the last true independent life insurers, Zurich has always believed in the value of advice and the professionals who provide it. They continue to invest in programs such as this one that are designed to strengthen the health and reputation of the advice profession. They're excited about the chance to partner with us, XY Advisor, to help shape the future direction of advice and help make it more accessible to more Australians. To find out more or to check out some of the latest advisor support tools, visit the website or ask your Zurich BDM. We all know education is one of the biggest things in the industry at the moment. It's why we've created the XY Advisor platform. It allows advisors to do short four-week courses. And what we're really keen to do is to get as many awesome content providers in there. So if you're an advisor or a service provider who have put together an awesome solution which can affect change in the way an advisor does their job on a Monday morning, please do put together an application for us at www.xyadvisor.com. So uh, was it just like luck that you got out of financial planning at the right time or? (laughs) (laughs) I was going to ask you the same thing. I can't believe you. Got, I can't no, that's believe right here. you guys are financial planners. I was. I was absolutely shocked. Um, and I still yeah. am. Today. He's not. He's not. He just but tried. He just tried for a while. But uh, no, I just got my. I just. I'm, I'm applying for my car again. I, I, I'm. Yeah, I'm being a corporate authorized rep again. I'm in the process of doing that. Yeah. So are BDMs. What's up? <laughs> So what what made you, uh, you obviously you, you know you used to be an advisor you now you're in the the employment space um, what what made you what prompted that I've pretty much been following you guys I, I <laughs> if this is where advice yeah, is going I'm out I pretty much did, I, I pretty much I pretty much was following who was I following first I think it was Nathan or maybe you where yeah. the accounting thing came in and the financial planning thing came in yeah and the the, the common theme of of client interaction was the most fun about the whole thing so yeah. i kept on following that little breadcrumb in front of me and uh f- financial planning was amazing it was a fantastic career it's a fantastic skill to learn fantastic skill to pass on to other people on your journey but yeah you get to a point where you're like okay there's a little bit more paperwork than I'm, than I'm, than I'm doing in my daily, <laughs> daily. Uh, Jeez, that's a that's a very blind way. Quite, yeah, little, yeah. Just a little bit. That's stretching the little. So yeah, so I just jumped into direct sales where I still get to continue it with small business owners. I've got a lot of financial planners as clients as well, so it's been uh, it's been really really great. Yeah. And so you, how long were you planning for? You were under the AMP under the AMP, AMP banner, yeah. direct employed by AMP. No, yeah, well, well, I did the Horizons program. I mean, the Planner Pathways program. Oh, mate, you've got friends for life. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so the same little <laughs> hu- incubator hub, I was there and I did that. And then. What intake were you? Oh, no, it wasn't. It was actually a separate one. It was called Planner Pathways program. Oh. So it was sort of like. Prior to. It was in the middle of intake two and three of Horizons. Okay. So what? we were the secret DEFCON. Get these, <laughs> see, see, see if we can do a better job with these guys. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then the GFC hit at about 2008. And then I went straight into a practice in Brisbane, in Vest Blue. And they had, uh, yeah, so they had three, three property? or four. No, no, they were the biggest Blue. AMP practices there. Yeah, they are. Good and operators. Then, mm. I think they had four locations, none in Sydney at that time. So I've, I went mm. to Brisbane to work with them, with the wife. And then I think they've now got 11. 11 practices. Yeah, it's a large firm. In Sydney. And they're f- absolutely fantastic firm. Mm. So fantastic place to get my grounding. And, the, and then I went to the banks, ANZ Bank, for another. So I, I was with them for two years and then ANZ Bank for another two. Uh-huh. So have you met... Benny the Big back Bank Basher over here. <laughs> Benny Bates, the Big Bank Basher. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so there's a great podcast that um, that you can search for, which is uh, with Phil Kewen and uh, Mark Bynum from the AFA. Funniest thing I think I've ever seen on this podcast. So, so the, the boys, the boys uh, left me out in the cold. They made me do the uh, podcast. Do it by all by yourself. Oh. Me in with the, C, the CEO uh, and the president, the CEO and the president of the, the Association AFA. of Financial Advisors. And no, uh, well, I give him a bit of heat. I asked him a lot of questions. I, I had no one to raise the call him in, uh, Ben so. Adele Ferguson. Mate, Nash. And, and the funniest part is, like Ben was a big part of, when I, you know, he, he played a role in the AFA for a good year or so. Right, oh, man. I've been. Mean, I love the AFA. Yeah, I love the AFA. I'm, but, I'm still but, a volunteer with them. I've been a volunteer. But can I say it did not seem like that at all. <laughs> the best part at the end well, is I like, them. I thought I this was them. meant to be fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> opens with. So did uh, Brad Fox chuck you under the bus, and I was like, 
Here we go. <laughs> well, what I meant was that the timing seemed a little bit unfortunate for Mr. Q and who I have the deepest respect for. He's a I great guy. An extremely stra- strategic human being and has made some fantastic decisions since joining the AFA. Yeah. However, it and just dealt seems with some quite, great questioning. Quite unlucky that he's well. come in royal commission, like you know, dealing with the dregs of Liff. It's like uh, you know, mm. yeah. and, and then and then, and then Ben who, Nash comes along and just starts ribbing him. It's like, just like, so funny. Job. Although I have to say that Phil's answer to that question was oh. uh, it blew me away because he said that, you know, while there's a lot of work involved, that uh, if you can't make a difference at this point in time, then he's never going to get a better opportunity to make a difference to the industry. Yeah, and that was a great answer. You, so, you could see it in his yeah. face. He's like, oh, oh, mm. this is what I've got to like get <laughs> into like political gear. <laughs> anyway, well, he did well. anyway. Oh, I killed yeah. it. You made him look so good by being so harsh on them and they're like they just but we but we digress like champions. T- today today we're actually chatting about a few things um most importantly though uh are you enjoying what you're doing since you've left advice yeah absolutely so the um the transition advice was great and financial planning is great um it was it was the interactions with business owners that i love the most so i went uh, even in my financial planning career i went into corporate financial planning with anz bank so I was sort of heading towards the global wealth at anz and then I started to visit businesses as part of this, and then I just thought, no, nah, I'm going to go into direct sales. Wow. So at least I, I don't need to do the paperwork associated with it. I can just have <laughs> the same honest conversations, mm. and then and then another our team can deliver on service. So it's been great. So it was the whole concept of like you were a bit ahead of the curve of corporate super dropping off actually a revenue stream, and um, going well actually shit. We're just rolling out a product. What else? should we probably do? Something else? Maybe it's maybe there's a bit more value to add. Is that yeah? Sort of- well, pretty much in the in the commercial space, key person insurance mm-hmm. compulsory with bank loans. Mm-hmm. So I quite and unquote, that was the lead in. That was the lead in. So the the holistic financial planning, people weren't busy business owners. I'm getting a loan, compulsory key person insurance attached to the loan, the equivalent of LMI. Yeah, and they're just like. Tell me where to sign and get the hell out of my office. <laughs> so it was difficult to have an authentic, realistic conversation without scoping out half the things that I wanted to talk about. So, yeah, right. um, it, and it wasn't anyone's fault. It was just that's just the way it was. So I, um, so again, so I really loved that interaction with the business owner, and and I just felt that I could get more of it going into a different business. So I entered Employshaw, which was a startup at the time with ten employees. Mm. So ten yeah. employees. Yeah. So I got so what they now seven twenty. I spoke to your your head of. Uh, Head of talent. talent the other day, he said they do uh, a, a new staff onboarding once a fortnight, 20 new staff every fortnight. What's mm. up? What's up? Or oh, at your business. So, so five biz- years so ago, there was 10 employees. Yeah. There's, There's now, now 700, 700 yeah. plus. And every two yeah. weeks, they bring on 20 employees all at once. That's their <coughs> induction day. Wait, wait, like, wait. What? what do you guys do? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah. What, what yeah. yeah. No, it's, we research. Sorry, we know all about it. Oh. We sell. No, we. we it, it's, it's external HR for a small business. Right. So, so we're pretty much the first guys that have. You, you guys are disrupting the financial industry by creating communities of authentic relationships and conversations, which people are really, really for. Uh, with employment for small business, it's like expensive solicitors, expensive contracts, inauthentic documentation. Mm-hmm. So what we've said is look, y- you can encourage better relationships with staff, we can do it for you. Fixed fee, unlimited service. Just give it over to us. So, so we're How handling. Much? Well, it's it's low price for them. It starts at like fifty bucks a week. What to have your outsourced HR? Outsourced HR. So it's so, like that time that I asked my wife to write her own employment contract and she didn't, and it's like I got no contract now. So she could sue me at any time. It's like, what am I going to do? Be I, that? I got no insurance. I got no contracts. Like you need HR. You're wide open. We need to have a meeting. Is it true the best thing to do with, with a troubled employee or someone you don't like who's in your business is just pay them to go? <laughs> No, obviously not. Really? I, mean, the, I, I have heard that. It yeah, is. well, look, it, it, or something, it, yeah? It, it, that is the quickest, easiest way to skin the cat, so to speak. So there's lots of options you can do. But, okay, you, it's sort of like I've got two kids, another one on the way. Do you just pay them? That's to, what I mean. Yeah. It's, sort of like, it's, it's sort of... Leave me alone. Money, yeah. Yeah. You can go. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, deed, the deed's a good strategy, but it's it's not, you know, it's not, not sustaining, not organic. So, in other words, chopping people at the head... It's going to cost you it's a lot a of money. It's a band-aid approach. Yeah. So it's a quick, easy win. Yep. But, but it might are... have worked well for you in the past, Clay. Yeah. <laughs> no, Clayton just had to How wait much did you out pay? and then they would leave. 
How many days have you tied? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Can neither confirm nor deny 10. Um, so, okay, so out of this 720 and you bring it on 20 per week, that's blowing my mind. That seems like a very fast growth company. To my mind, I haven't heard of a company growing that far, fast before. So, are you guys? Um, what's your internal HR like? No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, what do you guys, as out of that twenty, have as salespeople to uh, people that are actually providing the service? Oh, it's probably a 40-60 split in terms of our Which sales way? teams. So, forty percent salespeople, hundred and forty BDMs. Yeah, hundred and forty BDMs at the moment. So, hundred and forty BDMs. What? What? Just walking around all the cities. Knocking on doors and saying, "Would you like a HR solution for fifty yeah. bucks a month or and, a week and or whatever?" Most of most of them are inbound calls to our company. So even myself, seventy six percent of my deals are coming from referrals from yeah, existing right. clients. So it's not like what, what, why is someone referring you client? Like, how could they be so happy with HR that they're I like, know. You have well, I think that call. the I think that the the um, the well, one of the the factors that I think attracts a lot of people to that sort of model is the, the insurance element. So it's employee sure, so it's employment stuff, yeah, and then it's insurance stuff as well. So it's like, we're going to help you do the thing, but then we're going to cover your ass if something goes wrong as well, right? Correct. Is that right? What sort yeah. of insurance are we talking? Are we talking like cyber insurance, all that sort of stuff? Or it's, general it's, insurance? it's employment insurance, insurance against claims okay. from, within Fair Work. So we've actually, we spoke to QBE, they've underwritten a policy just for our yeah. clients. Really? That's and what's so, so cool again, about the general insurance market. You can just like create this whole... We need one for right. this guy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, actually, can we get a good How much through? does that... Pl- yeah, yeah, please, yeah, you need to quote us. But it's even for, for financial planning firms, if they need somebody terminated and the person's saying, well, if you terminate me, I'm going to sue you, which yeah. they can do by law, yeah. that's annoying. So, yeah. So, they'll, so the financial planning firm will call, call us and say, look, the guy's going to steal our entire database, rip yeah. us off, go to a competing company, set up his own company with all of our branding and stuff. Yeah. And if, if pretty much if we do anything, he's going to claim against us. That's what happens all the time. And to a financial planning firm that uses us, they've they've literally had been fleeced of all of the inter- intellectual property, and they've had a, I'll sue you if you come for me, in the back of it. So they're using Fair Work as a forum mm. to extract money off small businesses, which is absolutely crazy. Well, so, so what's the solution? How can people protect themselves from that sort of setup? Uh, at know, the moment, we how do you uh, protect? At them? the moment, to my knowledge, we're the only solution there is. So I'll put it to you in perspective. If if that in fact did happen, we give you a deed. Mm. You're unhappy with it. You go to Fair Work. Fair Work gives the business owner a letter, serves them a letter saying, we're going we're gonna to speak about um, Clayton's case. Your case is six months worth of your salary because that's a standard unfair dismissal claim. Let's say it's 20 grand. Just joking. But six, month, six, <laughs> on, six months of your worth. salary. <laughs> um, but let's say it's six months. You're sitting at six months. The employer's sitting at zero. They're going, well, that's absolutely ridiculous. We, we terminated. We had a termination clause within our agreement. We split clean. Pretty much what happens with Fair Work, they deem what's appropriate or not. So Fair Work looks at it and says, well, did you have enough story within the employment file to prove that they knew that the termination was imminent, that you followed a process, that they knew that they'll get instantly terminated based on stealing clients from you? And if they didn't, they've got very, very strong rights in the Fair Work Act. So one in three businesses are getting taken to Fair Work and employees are getting paid. One in three businesses, One in three businesses. get taken to Fair Work? Yeah, so more than 90,000 businesses every year getting what taken to Fair Work. And do you know like what yeah. the split is Look, across yeah. industries with that that sort of thing? Because no. one in three seems That's pretty huge. high, but like... It is. It's yeah. definitely so many bad employees out there. <laughs> Or air employers. How, how can you be bothered? I don't understand yeah. how people can be bothered. As an employee, it's like, oh, I'm God. going to sue you for unfair dismissal, and then I'm going to get placed back into your business where obviously I hate you and you hate me as well. Could you imagine? Like, I would not well, want to go I, to work every day. To like, be fair, what? on the employees, a lot of the so times, weird. a lot of people shouldn't be employers or managers. I agree. So There's part true. of the problem is, like, yeah, we've, we've all got, managed we've people. We know good. how. You're a good boss. And you guys I'm don't say I'm not, not a good not very boss. effective sometimes. Play is not a good boss. I, I'm not a great boss. <laughs> no. I'm not a great boss. You're why not a great why boss. aren't you a great boss? Um, I, I, I just. He demands you know, excellence. You, he laughs you know, you too know much. His head's too small. You're too happy. You know what it is? It's like I just expect people to be adults. So I don't want to tell them what to do. First of all, I don't even like the concept of being a boss. Like, I'm like, ooh, I'm your boss. Like, that freaks me out that I'm someone's boss. Like, you have to be a, responsible for another yeah, individual. I'm like, yeah. you're, you're a human. Just <clears throat> oh, no. be a human. Yeah, I agree. And look after yourself. 
Plus, it could have something to do with the fact that that time you did that personality test and you figured out that out of every hundred people, you are the zeroth person uh, in terms of politeness. So, <laughs> there is it really? It was yeah. really wow. It's the zeroth percentile. I've never seen zero percentile that- before. Because, like, you know, it's a standard deviation. There's like a long tail. And he's <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> That explains it. That explains the meds. You know, yeah. No drinking tonight. I think that might have something to do with it. I'm not sure. Like, you can't be certain about these things, but, like, I'm just thinking that well, potentially... No, it's a fair play. So, potentially... Okay, skipping that, uh, yeah, some people shouldn't be employers. I get the point. <laughs> so, okay. So, I'm, I'm interested about... So, there's this a big business. need for the business. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're... All right. But is it that you just, you're just following the procedures that people should follow, but people don't know what the procedures are, and then so they're not following them? Oh, they're just not good at filling process. No. Like not to take away from what you guys do or anything. No, no, not at all. It's it's we we set up tailored systems and documentation to meet the needs of the small business. So put put it to you in perspective, if you guys were in, to employ someone, let's say it's Emily. Sorry to put her on the spot. Yeah. But mm. let's say um, plenty of claims in there. Yeah. Independent get contractor. She's an independent contractor. <laughs> oh, that's right. Arms length relationship. There. Good nah, decision there. We no. love you, Em. <laughs> oh no! But if it goes for so long, then it becomes like a yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we we actually definitely do need to sort that out. That's a legitimate thing that uh, Em's like a full time employee. Emily, because- can you get in touch with Employee Show, please? I guess. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's it's even not so much that like if we take away the bureaucratic stuff underneath. If you didn't know Emily and what she's about and what she represents and you just get someone off the street, mm. you know, the importance of the recruitment process, as you would know full well based on your businesses, is super, super important. But some people just don't have the radar for it. Mm. They just don't know how to spot an authentic person to save their life. Mm. And then they've got this person that they're, they're in loggerheads with and then and then I, I, then they're not listening and they're not connecting and... That's what happens, and I and I think you guys aren't going to have those sorts of problems because you can probably talk about it human to human without the I'm the boss, you're the servant, this ma- oh, master. Oh, M's the boss. The best thing about M runs There's no boss. There's no boss. <laughs> yeah. but, the, but the general idea is if you if you explain that to the employee when they come in, like let's just say you didn't have Emily, you didn't know from Boris Hope, and you actually said to Emily, "Here's what we represent. Here's where we're heading. This is what our vision is. Mm-hmm. This is who we are." So you know. We're an authentic business, mm. and so if you're dragging your feet in, complaining every day, it's just not going to work for you. So at least you know what we represent. Here's what the standards of what we expect you to do. Here's what to do if you're upset about something, if we're upset about something. But pretty much, if you screw us, you've accepted the consequence that we've already predefined. Mm. So no matter what happens in the future, there's always a resolution that's mm. been pre-agreed. As long so as you're proving you've set expectations. And the yeah, fact and that, that you guys are bringing on 20 people a week or whatever that is Fortnite. That Fortnite, right means that you guys internally must have an amazing uh, hiring and firing policy as well so uh, i'm going through the process of becoming a high growth company or you know at least i hope so um and so i expect to be ramping up what do you recommend or, or uh, considering you guys hire 20 people per fortnight i reckon that's probably even the most interesting thing in the world it uh, sounds insane when yeah you say it. so 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 uh what do you look for and how do how do i find the best employees one of the philosophies that i know um some of our directors follow is good to great uh, a book jim, by collins. jim collins yeah brilliant so, so pretty much uh you hire the right people and and you get the right person leveling up from level one to five good to great individual. Yep. So the whole general idea of it is, um, do I know what to do? Yep. So define it and then um, train it and then embed it. So all of a sudden, I'm a self-sustaining individual in a high growth company. So technically speaking, if my managing director or my boss left tomorrow, I'm still doing the same thing, authentically self-driven. And then then it's management, then authentic management, and then superstardom or whatever they call it at the top. Yeah. L- what do level they five call executive. it at the top, Chris? Well, I'm not at the top, trust me. I'm, I, 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 I'm happily... <laughs> because you choose not to be there. Yeah, what's going on? I heard you were like number one salesman. Yeah, there's this. Well, I've I've been predominantly one of the top performers for for some time. I've been accoladed. How many years equity? were you number one for? Um, <laughs> well, I've been I've been well, pretty much one of the top performers for the first couple of years, and then I had a family, and yeah, the the amount of hours within the day shifted a little bit to serve other other interests, in particular family and things like that. So, yeah, there's a the more hours in the day that you dedicate towards your core purpose and and selling, yeah the higher you are up on the chain. 
But now, but now for me to get from, good. he sells. He yeah, sells. yeah. So I'm sitting at about number ten at the moment. But but to get from number ten to number one, I'd need to invest another approximately two to four hours a day. Yeah. Every day. And so there goes the book time with the kids. There goes the magical yeah. morning with the kids. Yeah, there totally goes the not worth yoga it. with the wife. Don't, don't ask why I do yoga with the wife. <laughs> but there goes pretty much the whole thing that's really important to me. So you guys all promote the same stuff that I live. Like, get your finances right. Get that monkey off your back. Mm. You've got a bit of freedom. And Definitely. then and then get your ideal lifestyle mm. right. And then get that that's monkey. That's a good term. Yeah. Good term. <laughs> did you well, know that? Monkey off your back. Oh, I did. Yeah, I read. I, ha- I haven't purchased a monkey, but I read the <laughs> right. summary because I'm a tight ass. <laughs> I read the summary. It's absolutely fantastic. By the way. But, um, <laughs> Actually, I'll uh, give you a summary. Is there a summary? Is there a summary? Yeah, there is. Someone's done a summary. If, if get out of town. Yeah, they have. Yeah. On his book, yeah, they have. Funny. Yeah, it sold a couple of thousand. It, it, it has sold a couple of thousand. Well, is it on Blinkist yeah. now? Ultimate I can't afford Twitter. it. Like <laughs> Angus and Robinson, I was like, wow, wait, that's a good. Well, I'll give a hot, hot tip no, for I'm anyone not. out there: if you're not on Audible, you get a free book the first time. And Clay muscled through him. It was quite a pain oh, to get on Amazon, Amazon but um, Amazon. yeah, hey, you fantastic. get a free book. It's so fantastic. if you want to check it out, just log on for free and you get his book. And yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I tell you, I, I, please put feedback in the Facebook group. I have I have a Google alert <laughs> set up for Fund Radio Lifestyle and I, at least every week a website come like releases my book like the free torrent download and I'm is like oh, I had God, that, that is karma coming back <laughs> <laughs> from like you know being 21 at uni and just downloading, downloading movies I'm like ah oh, well what, what can you do <laughs> isn't that like you've karma. made it you're a torrent like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah it's good enough for someone but anyway to you, you, yeah. you were saying it's a fantastic book and it's a Thanks, fantastic man. philosophy so I, I, I do the same thing. Like, money first, yep. get the monkey off your back, lifestyle, yeah. family second, and then... Yeah. What's well, not... You, well, it is, because money can be systemized. You, that's yes. important. It, it's very, very important. Yes. Financial and, and, and freedom. And automated, and then you just focus on what you love. Just focus on what you love. Definitely. So it's absolutely fantastic. So yeah. I, I, I resonate with the book a lot. Not that I've read the whole thing yet, but... Um, <laughs> oh, it's hard to get through Just the, the audio book, like, if you're yeah. hearing this... You can fast it. You can put it on one like six hours. It just goes, Yeah, it goes, go, I love it. I actually turn it up to three times. So then you just get through it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> it still is in there somewhere. Um, well, when Clay was actually first reading it, I was like, oh, not with your voice. Oh use, my God. use someone I'd else's rather, like, voice. Oh, so you, 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 you did it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. But, but <clears throat> okay. So 100 plus BDMs at, in, at Employee Shore. You're, you're there. They're you know, in the, you know, if we've got Clayton in the zeroth percentile, this is, this is. <laughs> Chris Madell is in the top of the bell curve. Quite polite. I, I, I find so, what, you know, what do you attribute that success to? Uh, that's a good question. I think, I think just uh, good habits, simple as that. So I do the same thing every single day. I go to the gym every day. I do these affirmations every single day. I make the same sorts of phone calls and appointments every single day. I know exactly how many meetings I need to have. So it's literally the metric is, my magic number, so to speak, is four meetings booked, three meetings held, and one person signs up. That's my goal. It doesn't always happen. It's usually three new clients a week. But basically, four, three, one is my metric. So just imagine that as a financial planner, which would be virtually impossible because you've got all the paperwork to do. Yeah. But in my in my world, I don't have all the paperwork. So I've, I literally, that's my goal. And it's... um. And there's a direct figure. So, you know, I have that many meetings. The average deal size is X amount of commission. My average conversion rate is X percentage. So it's it's exactly the same year after year after year where I know where if I work in another hour, it means 10 more calls, one more meeting, one more deal, which which is, equals this. So it's like a really fantastic lever. It's very, very easy to judge after a lot of years. But the same habits, mind, body, uh, day preparation, the magic numbers, which is my activity, and then a lot of time with the family in the nighttime, which I just tech off, tech off from five o'clock, no TV, no nothing. So it's awesome, yeah, it's awesome man. every day of my life, including Sundays, holidays, you name it, every day. If you That's are brilliant. looking for Except a salesman, this is the man Except you the want. Yeah. Do, do you own a piece of employee shop? No. Really? So he's available, yeah, no. guys. Uh, no, I don't. And um, <laughs> yeah, and that's a good. Then question. you need Obviously, some more leads, don't you? Being part of the start. <laughs> yeah. But, but that being said, the um, yeah, the gentleman that owns it, Ed Melt's an absolute superstar. He's the best guy in the world, and he's got he's worlds apart in terms of the character and delivery and the honesty within the business he runs. That's and awesome. and you know he he gets all the top ratings and the awards. So absolutely nothing that I've done is credited to my myself. I've just been lucky enough to be on the ship that's been growing so fantastically, and um. Yeah, happy days. That's so awesome, you man. talk about this this habit, and you know I think habits are uh, are very important. That consistency, that sort of stuff. But 
obviously it's more than that, right? It's not like, you know, you can't have some flog picks up a phone, 10 phone calls, three meetings, four bookings, you know, whatever. Yeah, those stats don't work so, with me. Exactly. I can do that exact same phone too call. Much. Too many. He's like, he always too opens much. with this like, surprising. what's the... Did what's... you just call yourself a flog? <laughs> <laughs> that was the big thing I picked up. You're like some flog, and I'm like ah, flog, and then you're like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> yes. I was so just anyway, saying that I wouldn't be as effective as Chris. That's all. You're such a flog. So, that. so there's got to be. There's obviously you're you're good at connecting with people and you know uncovering their needs. You know sales. Obviously, you work in sales, right? So I think advice is sales as well to a certain yeah, degree. I, of I course. shy away from that. Yeah. At, uh, not at all. Um, so you know what? How have you how have you approached that? The same way I approached my first meeting with you. So so let's 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 debrief our meeting. You sent an email saying we've got a joint connection. Mm. Um, let's meet up. Oh, was or, he trying to sell you? Oh, you you contacted me first. <laughs> well, yeah, ben, Ben's an active so, Ben's an active LinkedIn member. But I put it to you this way: in in my head, um, <laughs> f- first and foremost, I didn't judge. I didn't judge the opportunity whatsoever. And, and then I found out what you're about and I absolutely love what you're about. And then obviously I committed to the meeting. And then I think I called you straight away and you're on your honeymoon or something and, you, and I woke you up Correct. at some, some abominable time. No, no, no. It was it was late at your end. It was like three o'clock in the afternoon for me. I was just hanging out oh, by, was the, it? Yeah, by the pool been late and we had a calm desert. And we were trying to connect and we couldn't. We were trying to like line up a time. I was like, I can't line up a time. And then he goes, and then he just called me and I answered the phone and I said, Oh, I'm on my honeymoon. And he's like, Oh my God, your wife's going to kill you. Get off Yeah, I said, Why on earth is your phone? <laughs> yeah. Well, Crazy mate, I was, doing my, I, was doing my 10, I was doing my 10 phone calls for my meetings when I got back. So I started, I started my prospect pipeline, you know, a week before I left the honeymoon to make sure that I had some opportunities when I got That's back. That's very so, diligent. Yeah. And right. then I, I approached the sales. Well, in other words, I didn't say no to the meeting, so there may not have been a benefit to me or not. It didn't matter. And the second thing I did is I kept it very open. So just like we're doing this podcast here, you didn't tell me, here's what the agenda is, here's what you need to say, here's what we're trying to get out of it. Hmm. We just left it on the table and we got to experience a connection. So for the first five minutes, I think I was talking about marriage vows. I said, you know how important marriage (laughs) vows are? Your relationship will get better and if you respect safety. those. Oh, mate. I was the, trust the, treat, the, yeah, trust the trust tree. The trust tree. I was being Mr. Righteous. I won't, this to, I won't I go, go into the full detail. I go, but... the lo- like, oh, I said, because, <laughs> well, this guy's about to get married. So <laughs> he, you know, oh, he oh, this show. guy, this guy's got rules of his house, of his household. And if anyone oh, so breaks bad. the rules, that's so that's bad. clear wow. that you have broken the rules. Oh, that's so bad. I went straight home to my wife and I said, we are setting up some house rules. Don't do it. Wait a sec. I like it. Like, we've got some rules. What What are some of your rules? Well, we, um, I don't take myself too seriously, by the way, but the general idea of rules is, is we do the same thing with business owners, right? We say, look, if you know what we value, yeah. we, uh, we, we're all going to get along pretty well because, you know, you, you know what my, you know, my, my good points and bad points are. You know what I really don't like. It might be swearing. It might be something else. I'll, I'll put safety, right? Work, health and safety in a business for a financial planning business. Now, the, the law, the work, health and safety law has made that thing so inauthentic that people are more concerned about the, getting the document right than they are the physical safety of a human being, right? right? Mm. Sometimes financial planning has got the same problem. So With That little compliance that increases it. Yeah. Right yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so putting it in perspective, at home, the rule might be safety. So that sounds like a bit of a cop-out, but let's say my kids are killing each other. There's six and two. So my son doesn't really hit... But my two-year-old will, will gouge his eyeball out, I promise you. So <laughs> they're in the bath. I hear screaming. And so the first thing, and this is an employee sure thing as well, is they, they need to learn how to manage that themselves. They need to be responsible to be able to manage it themselves. So I'm not going to rescue, name or shame. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is they understand and know that there's safety in my home. So that is not safe. Hitting and bullying is not safe. And also order. So if they're not picking up after themselves and leaving crap everywhere, that's not safe. See, isn't that a little bit manipulative? But no, no. I'm using safety as as the whole mm. look. Yeah, the New really South Wales that. government does it really well. <laughs> it's got to be good. That's <laughs> what I mean. Yeah. Here's your policy. Here's the work health and safety manual. But so that's, another that's piece one of, of the rules. So as and I promise you, that's eighty percent of the situation. So let's just say right. The, and I was talking to Ben about it, actually. We had a situation where the kids started to fight in the bath yeah. every night. And I was getting so annoying. And I said to my wife, I said, because I talked to her about this stuff, and I go, oh, because I know I'm self-righteous sometimes with these poor little kids. And <laughs> I'm like, honey, like, I want to, like, get angry at them or I want to, I wanna, like, rescue them. 
just help me out. And she goes, well, look, you, firstly, you haven't set any rules. They need to know what the hell you're about. And then you need to literally keep on training them until they get good. And so that's what I did. So the first time I said, look, guys, if, if you keep on hitting each other, you're out of the bath. And they love the bath. So that was the pretty much the warning. And then one time I gave them a yellow little card, yellow card, red card, <laughs> yellow card. And, and that was the last time they've done it. And that's been about four and a half weeks ago. So, you know, and now that those rules are embedded, Smart. I never, ever have to, you know what it's like? Like, it's so annoying, whether it's staff, whether it's, whether it's kids, it's like, they're just rolling around in their heads about stuff to complain about. And because you're, they're constantly trying to get you to rescue them, it's, um, it's really, really hard for them to become responsible, capable individuals within your family. So now, well, people generally just push up against any resist. They're looking for some sort of resistance to push up against. Absolutely, yeah. Honestly. But if you don't put anything around, they'll just run. That was, that was some really cool... Dad advice. Mm. Oh, no, sorry, I love the dad no, advice. No, no, that was the cool. Cl- the cluckly, cluckiest guy I know is sitting right next to us here. Oh, yeah. like, yeah. Are you really? No, you're not. Oh, he is. Yeah. Like, no, I'm not. definitely oh, yeah. getting ready to The only reason he has a kid, had a kid yet is because of the other half. Like, that no, is... no, no, it's because uh, it's because I'm building a business. Yeah, that wouldn't help. But yeah, once, yeah, yeah. once it launches and, and, and does what it's going to do, then... Yellow cards, red cards, all set to go. <laughs> so bad, <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Sorry, so I interrupted Sinbin, your, Sinbin. I interrupted do you do the Sinbin your, uh, as well? I haven't had to yet. No. Oh, that is great. You still got a to. few cards up your sleeve. No, there's no consequences really. It's just more so habits with them. No, I don't really punish. I don't use the punishment or praise stuff. Oh, it's, that was just... Yeah, a, so, so okay. then it's a natural... I call it a natural <laughs> consequence, right? So same with business owners, right? Financial planning business owner, they've got a problem with someone taking sickies, okay? Sickies mm. are annoying and they're expensive. They're like average 10 grand a small business. Mm. So, okay, how do you resolve a sick leave issue? Do you? Get angry at them for doing it, fire them because they keep on abusing it, um, or put a strict policy in place and give them warning letters. Wrong, wrong, wrong. So what do you do instead? You say to them, look, when you start employment with us, one of our bugbears is sick days. Sickies are illegal. They, they're abused by most of the employees in Australia, nine out of 10 sick days, and they're really, really expensive. Nine so out of 10? Nine out of 10 on oh, average please. per small business. So I abuse them as much as I possibly can. Yeah, so that's like 10 grand, like 10 <laughs> grand on good. average a year, which is really, really expensive, right? And that's directly out of pockets, right? Because you don't need to pay it on the way out the door, this, that, the other. So anyway, and okay, and then there's a deeper thing where, okay, you know they're lying. You now have to accept that lie, and that's annoying. And then all of a yeah. sudden, you're... You're both mm. lying to each other in and you essence. Can't, you're just perpetuating it. Yeah, it's, and then, yeah, that one good. lie turns into two, turns into three, then the other mm. employees start mm. to lie and do the same thing. And then all of a sudden, you know, deep in your subconscious, you actually now are getting them to drive this big rig. If it's a construction firm, and you're like, hmm, do I really trust him or not? So you, you, you're building a culture of r- trust. So let's just say we don't have a lot of sick days at employees. You guys store. could sell what you do just Simply off that. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think many firms deal with it very good. Because it is, especially small firms, it's tempting. Like, it's just so hard. You're like, again? You should know, yeah, you should know what to do. You shouldn't be ripping us off. It's clear that you're lying to yourself and us. And it's mm. so annoying and it's so frustrating. And the worst thing is you get, I think, even as a father or as a business owner, you get more angry with the stuff you let go. Like, mm. it's like, yeah. damn, I should be frustrated with yourself. For sure. And then yeah. you... You deal with it inappropriately. Yeah. So even the, uh, Jordan Peterson, this new psychologist on the um, on the circuit in YouTube, at least he goes. I'm reading one of his books, and he says, "Don't let your kids do something that's going to make you resent them." Mm. So what I mean like that is like my son will do something, or son will take a sick day, and I'll say to him, "Mate, I want to be able to believe you, but for me to be able to do that, you need to tell me the truth. And if you don't tell me the truth, I won't be able to believe you. And if I don't believe you, blah blah blah." blah. And with the sick days, pretty much, if someone's taking the sick day, you say, "Well, look." It's your responsibility to prove to us why we should pay you the sick day. So we reverse the responsibility onto the employee. So if they don't bring the sick day, they're just not getting paid. And that's standard. So instead of me having to chase you up, can you please send the medical certificate? I know you were lying anyway, so I really don't want to follow you up for it and all this sort of jazz. None of that. Mm. Because you're basically saying it's your responsibility to do it. So someone books a holiday. Um, Again, someone goes to the practice manager and says, uh, I want to take a holiday. And the practice manager says, well... The policy, the annual leave policy said you need to give us four weeks notice. You didn't do it. Oh, yeah, but I booked it anyway and I'm going next week for four weeks. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> and then and then he's going to say or she's going to say, well, that's an interesting choice you've made because in our policy it says if you go on holidays after three days of unauthorised absence, we have got the right to terminate you and look for someone else to replace your role. 
And then the second thing is we, not, we may not want to pay for the annual leave because it's not approved. So I hope you saved up spending money. So that's really strict. Mm. And most business owners wouldn't do it. But just imagine the power you've got when someone does that once and just say, here's what our standards are. The reasons the standards are set in place to protect you as, as well as everyone else. Now you've put me in a corner and, and I've got no other option. So either I accept it this time, please don't do it again. Alternatively, you're, you're going to pay for that mistake. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And obviously, if you're an authentic business owner, you're never going to just boom come down with the. Can you outsource the conversations? Because yes, I think you can. I think as much as you're talking a whole lot of sense right now, but you could you could you could have all this on a platter and the wrong per- you give it to the wrong person, they're yeah. still going to fuck it up. Like I mean, sorry, actually, do you you don't like swearing, do you? No, no, I swear all the time. Oh, perfect. Well, yeah. So someone's still going to fuck it up. Who? Mm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Clay, Clayton. Hall. <laughs> All right, so t- tell me, tell so, me. So actually, I'm no, I want to know about how how you guys. Adrian, you just have that. to be better, increase your emotional intelligence. There's no Our other solution. Our service allows us to come on site and have the termination conversations with employees. Ah, cool. So George Clooney up in the air. I shouldn't <coughs> even say this on air, but basically, we are the person that's doing the redundancies. Pretty much. So it's Do unbelievable. Do you fire people? I personally don't, but our service team does. Right, that would be such a hard job. It would be. I'm the worst be. firer in the world. Oh, I don't know. I, I think, I had think to fire you'd be. Once, so no it's one, so bad. So bad. How, how have you done it before? Um, Normally, he just waits for the people to get I was going to say, I couldn't imagine leave. hating you. I usually leave before. No, no, he no, never no, has no, had to do it I, very often. No, <laughs> it's, 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 I feel so bad. I feel so bad. Do I'm, you? I'm like. That's because you know it's your fault, though. It's, that you have to yeah, fight. that's probably. What did you say the last time you had to do it? Um. Or it was it was something that just had to happen because uh, because so this company a lot of things change because we're in startup land and then um, one of the people who was working for me um, we it just it didn't work out because of something completely nothing to do with them and so I had to fire them because of something that nothing to do with them. That was so hard. Yeah, it is. Because I'm like, I like you and I want to work with you, but we can't work together because of these reasons. And it was the worst. It's heartbreaking. It's very, very emotional. It's very vulnerable. And that's yeah. most of the business that I meet are pretty much scorned. So yeah. whether whether they haven't set the rules up correctly, whether they've opened their hearts to employees that have ideally ripped them off or at mm. least not, not been present, or if it's that the, the word on the street is you're lucky to get an 80 percenter. And then the 80% is literally someone that's motivated enough to do 80% of their role well. Where 110%er, like Emily, as an example, mm. she sounds... She's 150. Yeah, yeah, she sounds like an absolute <laughs> unbelievable yeah. person. And even in financial planning land, with all respect to the banks and ANZ in particular... 70%ers. I, I could see, oh, I could see I could bank a land. star advisor <laughs> a, a mile away out of 100 people. Like, bang, you're a star advisor. Because you just know... That you've got that the they care about what they're doing they a little bit. Like, <laughs> they've got passion and they're motivated and they care. It's funny so, how you can see a light on and they're actually engaged with what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, they're alive. Like, and even you guys, like you guys are so alive. And I'm like, you're not financial plans. Like my whole family's <laughs> accountants, believe it or not. So, and we've got the same jovial sort of. We're not the, the, the quote unquote box, but hmm. yeah, you accountants got, with personality. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll see. You, who's, both you guys are accountants. No, <laughs> I started you at started, accountancy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't well, have done that course. But you, you, uh, you deal with stuff as well, don't you? Yeah, you I have. Some... Yeah, yeah, I deal with a whole lot of. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's why I can relate to all these situations. He's had so more much. companies and staff members than he's <laughs> than he's made dollars. <laughs> It's a yeah. bit like that, though, isn't how it? How many how many different contracts do you have for all of those businesses in your? I don't need that agree. many different ones. How many but I'll tell you what, I'm thinking of some new clauses to go in. That's for sure. <laughs> how many companies? How many directorship positions would you hold? Do you reckon? As a few. Are, are you like yeah. 10, 20? Yeah, I should probably go do that director's course. Yeah. The hardest <laughs> bit is when you, you when you think that anything's possible, you 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 know that I can serve here and I can serve then I can serve then. It's all priorities, right? Because mm. you can do everything. Blah blah blah, especially if your mindset's right. But it's yeah, it's the priority. It's 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 difficult. Well, there's, yeah, difficult there's been a whole small. even just on that. There's a whole re- refinement process that's been going on. Like especially mm. with working with these guys, it's fantastic because you've got you've got a mix of um, guys that can help keep my ideas on track. <laughs> that's hard, isn't it? A, 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 a 
open entrepreneur, it's the hardest bit is focusing on the one core thing, and that's another Jim Collins thing, the hedgehog concept. There's a thousand opportunities, but whatever you're best at, most passionate about, commercially sound, that's your hedgehog, go for it. That's, a, again, a, a technique our, my managing director introduced to me. And, um, yeah, and hope, yeah, hopefully... I still like those. planting seeds, but I'm getting better at refining the focus. So. Yeah, man. Oh, it, he, he focuses a lot on efficiencies, but not so much on effectiveness. <laughs> so he would just be like, hey, this is a great idea. I'm literally going to devote my life to it. <laughs> And okay, make... so like we probably don't need to just talk about Patty's flaws all afternoon. <laughs> I did. You guys, I feel like you guys hijacked my question. I was talking about building relationships. And, hey, I was and really how enjoying you, that. How you, <laughs> how you ended up? I at can the imagine you were opposite yeah. end can of the spectrum to, to Clayton. No, we can we can revisit that afterwards. Um, but you know what? So you know you, you were talking about open open mind, go into meetings, follow your process. Yeah, as in as in what what made me get into sales. And excel at sales? Yeah, like how, because we, like everyone works in sales, whether you want to admit it or not, and some people don't like to, but I think that in advisors, an integral part of an advice business for most advice businesses is growing their business. And that means acquiring new clients. And that means selling and, you know, um, I suppose connecting totally. with people with ideas, right? So clearly you're very good at that. What, what, what would you say? Like you've come from the advice side, you've gone to, um, you know, a non advice field, but what, what can people learn from your success, I suppose, in, in particular with connecting with people and, and, and building relationships, which I know you're very strong at? Okay, um, so I'll, I'll do two things. Um, what, can, what I've found in my experience can promote a better relationship, because I was a financial planner and I don't think I was fantastically authentic as a financial planner. And then when I'm in sales, I learned who I was and what worked. And, and obviously, it's, it's always about the other person. First and foremost, so so pretty much, I got asked a question. Same thing. Someone called me up. They're starting a new business, and they said, "I'm a cleaning company. I want to promote to the real estate industry." And, and they said, "Do you think it's a good marketing idea to send them bottles of wine, um, just literally a, a, a mail dump of wine bottles, to say we can with a catchy slogan saying we're able to clean your floor, whatever the hell it is?" And I said, "I said, well, first and foremost, that's inauthentic." You don't know whether they drink or not. You don't know them for a bar of soap. And I said, if I receive that wine myself, I give it to my wife and throw the letter in the bin. Now, why would I do that? It's not because I'm callous and, and inauthentic, but I just don't have the time to even consider. And it was inauthentic. So you haven't spent the time getting to know me, researching LinkedIn, sending me some information that I might actually value. So I just don't have the time. I've got to keep on going. And It sounds, yeah, whatever. But so the first thing I learned was, yeah, like if I'm going to get you guys a gift, I'm going to know what you want before I send it, number one. Number two, if I'm going into a financial planning firm, I'll send them an industry guide saying, here's exactly what you could have in place to better support your employment relationships, your compliance within the Fair Work Act, and also some safety procedures with you guys. Um, before I got out there, and then the first thing we'll do is literally talk to me about your business, tell me exactly what you want, tell me exactly how you tick to see if anything that I do will meet whatever you do. So same with you, right? I found out where you're heading in your journey, what you're about, I got sold instantaneously. I asked you, "How can I, Stop. how can Keep I get going. my, yeah, how can I get my <laughs> clients or the people that I know into your circle?" Um, and that, and that's where I started. And I was, and I, and I genuinely want to do that because what you're doing is so, so important. And I said to you myself, I said it would have been so important if I had it at 25. Because oh my goodness, <laughs> I wasted hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of dollars um, in stuff that could have been a lot different if I had have got the right advice. Dollar make me sooner. holler. Yeah, but it's true. Oh, hundreds of thousands. Easy, easy, yeah. yeah. This guy, yeah. Is it, he's a, uh, is it Mustache Man that you follow? Yeah, Mr. Money Mustache. Yeah, My wife's yeah, right yeah, into yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Extreme yeah, yeah. So, ex yeah, and extreme reti retirement extreme and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. we're highly conscious with the money. That being said, though, I haven't looked at the Australian index in three and a half years. I've got no idea what it is. I think it was 4,600 last time I looked at it. I don't watch TV. Mm. Um, call me a... No, you're a legend. I yeah. love that. Yeah, I didn't have a TV I, for like five years. Yeah, did you? Really? Yeah, uh, maybe even longer. And then he only got a couch last year. It's, no, <laughs> no, he actually. It's so bad. It's so bad. That's cool. Where were you Honestly. seeing? Before? No, that was you. Oh. I'm talking about you. <laughs> what do you mean? I only got a couch. Like last year. that time when you moved into that house, and then it was there has no couch, and you just sat on the floor. On oh, my really I your apartment. Even, really, is that what it was? <laughs> I can't even remember. But when really? I moved in, we didn't have a bed base either. 
right? And I, I didn't really think too much about it. You, you just, you know, you well, live in life. Startups, like, you just roll with you li- it. You like, live in life. The and, newspaper, you're all good. And then I didn't think anything about it until, like, a mate came over, and he used to be a client as well, and he just sees, like... Me sleeping on the ground, <laughs> essentially, and he's like, "Ghetto mattress." What's up, is there bro? Like a, bit of t- like a hole in the mattress with a bit of stuffing. No, hey, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> like, yeah. Anyway, yeah. but, but the TV amazing. thing, the TV thing, yeah. Oh, it's huge. We huge. we used to live together. Clay and I used to live together without a TV. Yeah, yeah man. Wow, that's how X Y was born. That's huge. No TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How productive can you be without a TV? Dude, it's so good. You can't write a book. When you got a TV, I no don't way. Think, I don't no think way. you can. I write a lot, and I, you can't do it with a TV. Um, so much I just got rid book. of Netflix. Oh, so much so I just so I bought a TV uh, about eighteen months ago, and then we got Netflix, and I just got rid of it the other day, and my life is so much better. Mm. I couldn't imagine. Oh, imagine if you got rid of Reddit. Reddit. That would have like imagine no, how much I time that would free from up. Reddit. I really like Reddit. But how amazing is it when you, you've got independent thought Dude. and the creativity and curiosity that comes up when totally. you don't have all of that crap yep. coming in? It's amazing. But what about Game Low of Thrones? Low information diet, like, right? Low information diet. It's just yeah. the best show. Yeah. But you actually start being able to, to have that deeper connection with yourself and your wife and everybody else within your universe. Yeah, man. It's, it's like just uh, most people just never think about what's important to them and then just do that. Too. And that's financial advice plus money. Yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> but you know the TV thing. Uh, uh, interesting story. I I was at one stage I was doing anything that came to me, right? Anything that you know. Okay, I went vegan for two years, and then okay, I gave I gave up alcohol, and I'm still Legend. giving up alcohol. I'm eating meat again, but and then anyway. So these things I'll do this like straight away. I'm like no, nah, w- whatever I receive, I'm just gonna do. And um, anyway, one day it said no TV. I got the TV off the wall, chucked it in the bin. Legend. Absolutely chucked in the bin because I thought I can't do it any other way. I'm yep. so addicted to this thing. I'm so it's so toxically ingrained. And I said to my wife, I said, "Oh, w- would you?" I I sort of pre-approved it, not really. I said, "Would you be like fantastically upset if I got rid of the TV?" And she goes, "She goes, oh, not really." Anyway, straight in the bin. Excellent. And she got home and she was upset about it. So in a couple of months, we had to replace the TV. But still, but still it was uh, like it was you were number amazing. one salesman. Eh? I, mean, I like, yeah, I like your dedication. Yeah, it was an old one anyway. Man, I like your dedication to that stuff though. Well, it's funny. Like how many people read these books and actually go, that's a great idea. I should adopt that in my life and not do it. That's pretty much, yeah. You're the guy that does it. Yeah, but even and your book is so influential and critical for the summary, yeah. everybody. Yeah, the summary. But <laughs> all the good what, stuff's what at the start, actually. What you represent is so strong. Yeah, man, thank you. And it's so authentic, and everybody needs to hear the message, and people can't hear it sometimes because the bloody TV's on. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> so, totally. on Clay's book, that's that's where Emily came from. Really? Emily actually approached oh, Clay because he was yeah. sort of his um, his promotion of the book wasn't quite going as functional as um... no. It's like the promotion of the book went well. It's just I suck. He at just the led tech them piece. into a broken. Yeah, the funnel. technique wasn't yeah, working. No. Emily's so like was, Emily approached had him all going, these articles um, everywhere. I was writing all this stuff and it was all going to the the website. And then they get to the website and they're just like, Bobo, your my mailing list does not work. <laughs> and so she she doesn't even bother with the download of the free chapter. She just goes and buys the book and she's like, look, I love what you're doing, but like, you're such a goose. Do you want me just to fix it for you? And I'm like, <laughs> no way. I was like, yeah, thank you. And um, and then I was like, I was like, boys, you you got to meet you got to meet this person. She is just phenomenal. And um, yeah, I mean, she has. What she's had done in less than a year for X Y, you know, she completely changed everything. I don't even think we could have got there. I was going to say like we couldn't have done that with uh, with a thousand hours of work, but uh, nah. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's yeah. amazing the relationships you create, what they can do so quickly. Yeah. No she's, contract, she's though. No contract. Just complete values alignment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and we really do have to actually sort that out. Yeah. Hey, do you know anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, so tell us about this uh, this sales school that you went to. Yeah, so um, I, I've presented for Sales Hacker before, and I've got it's a network of sales mm-hmm. people in a, in a sales community, not too dissimilar to an advice community that you guys have set up here. Um, yeah, pretty much the presentation was again on just high. Velocity sales and the way I presented, which is probably also an answer to the question you asked before, is how do you actually build someone to be able to sell and to be conscious of, yeah, activity versus metrics and not say, well, it's not not going to work for me, never going to work for me. Pretty much the story of of me within uh, employee sure. I'd never done a sales role either. I was an accountant, so mm. to speak, at a transactional financial planning. 
holistic and then I went back to tra- transactional when I ended up in business and um, sales, I was selling product, um, not heart to heart and I was not getting anywhere and so I read a few books and and pretty much what I, when I understood that firstly it's very, very, if you're analytical crazy like I am, it's all numbers. It's like you, you, you make a certain amount of calls, you'll get a certain amount of meetings, you'll sit a certain amount of meetings, a certain amount of people will sign up. And I thought, oh my gosh, like that's just like accounting. It's as simple as that. It's like, oh. So that's pretty much what I did. And I was, I was lucky enough to really, boom, break all the records at the company, get up to the top really quickly. I, was, I think I was trebling at that time what other people were writing. Wow. So I was setting some really, really good standards. Standards that had already been set in the UK. So, so we've got a UK head office now and um, they'd already set those standards. So I knew it was possible. I'd look what they had done. I'd look what they were earning. And at that stage, money was really important to me. Like it was one of the drivers as to why I got into sales. And I think that's flipped a little bit of late. But um, yeah, so pretty much um, activity, a heart-based conversation surrounding exactly what the customer needs and consistency. And, and that's that. It's as simple as that. So literally magic numbers, empathetic, empathetic connections with another human being, and that's that. So in other words, and I never care. I don't care if you sign or you don't sign. I don't care. I care that I get to have a good, honest conversation with someone that's going to have tangible outcomes I, simply because I got to meet someone. Uh, and that's that. And well, that. I'm, I'm curious to know, because you guys are obviously sort of a bit more advanced than you're thinking around uh, people and employment and how people operate. How do you guys internally like work together, like the sales team, the other departments? What, yeah, what are some of the stuff? culture like? Yeah, well, how do you guys... Amazing, yeah. absolutely amazing. So we um, we're awarded best places to work um, for the last few years. Companies over 100 staff, plus Australian Growth Awards. So pretty much, <laughs> we're we're one of the fast growing companies in Australia, and we got best place to work. So correlation causation. Yeah, well, well, pretty much. Yeah, that's like mm. the magic formula. How have you grown really quickly? without damaging all of your employees in the process by raw but we're not so chicken or egg making more money to pay more people so they're happy because they got more money or treating people well that made more money so the secret is well the secret is do both at the same time step by step so the hedgehog mentality we're going to focus really really well on making sure that we're getting the right people with the right values just like you would with Emily make promises that we're going to deliver upon and so long as you're both growing in that relationship great that's what we're going to mirror. So literally our first couple of salespeople, which I was part of, that's we were sort of the same thing where we love what we did. We're really, really happy to be part of this journey. We're, we're a fast-growing company. At that stage, I think we only had 200 clients, and now we've got 17,000. So, like, you know, you can, ima- you can imagine, like, we're just like a small practice. Like, Invest wow. Blue would have more employees and clients than, you know, I employees I had when I started. So mm. that was even smaller than... Invest Blue when I started with them, which was the AMP practice. But um, but pretty much, uh, yeah, get the right person, have the right conditions in place, have the right performance management structures to keep everyone accountable. Because even even I needed to become accountable with stuff as well. Like, I didn't realize how important activity was until I was reminded you're not hitting your minimum activity. And then I I wasn't I wasn't fantastically fascinated with doing my expense claims on time and the importance of the sales administration side. Yes. Until they started to pull me in a line to say, mate, if you keep on not submitting your expense claims, you're going to lose half of your bonus every quarter. Well, and that's one of the natural consequences. If Pretty much the way it works, if you wanted to get, in my opinion anyway, an autonomous, self-reliant sales per- person that continues to grow, set the right expectations and rules at the start, tell them, ideally speaking, that if you don't do three things, if you don't live up to our values, which is honesty, don't, don't fuck over the client ever, um, so pretty much your values, your activity. So it's not so much about the projected abstraction, tell me what you might think you could do about last week's meetings, <laughs> da 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 yeah. We don't want any of that. We just want you need to commit to a certain amount of phone calls or a certain amount of meetings. That's it. So don't tell me the story. Don't tell me the untruth. Don't tell me the abstraction. Just tell me what, tell me what your form is. That's all I care about. So, because I already know, from, as a small business in financial planning, that if you make a certain amount of calls, you're going to get a certain amount of meetings, and you're going to get a certain amount of revenue as a result. So that's all we care about: form, and then the accountability of the form. So the accountability is the client manager in the financial planning practice does a spot check three things that the salesperson or financial planner should have uploaded to the CRM system, the Coin platform, 
And and so let's say he's done, the financial plan has done their meetings for the week, or they say that they've done their meetings for the week. If they don't upload the stuff into Coin, they've got a problem already. And then if the client manager even sees one of those things, why have you lied on that? There's possibly going to be a question to be asked. But basically, what happens with my company, if I'm not doing any of these three, I'll lose 50% of my entire bonus for the quarter. Ooh. So let's just say, I um, I pitch you guys, X, Y. Yep. I say, oh man, we're going to do the best contracts of green for Emily you've ever seen. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be authentic. And it's like, no, no, no I, just need a, I just need a piece of paper. Don't worry about all that stuff. We're, we're already good. <laughs> but let's just say, you sign up. Yeah. And I've pro- over-promised. Yep. And now it's being under-delivered. Right. As soon as our client experience team comes in and takes it off me, I most probably will lose my bonus. So as soon as it has to get dealt by someone else, or I've lied, or I've screwed you over, or I've left a half-eaten lunch, I lose. Mm-hmm. Natural consequence number one. Let's say I get the biggest client at EmployShore, biggest value client, I've made my revenue for the year. <clears throat> and then I put a cigar in my mouth, feet on the table, boom, Mr. Arrogant. Yep. I lose 50% of my commission, which is that commission or, or bonus for the, for the quarter because I stopped my activity. Wow. The third thing is, if, if I'm not using the systems that I spend a lot of money on, coin software, updating systems, I also have got that capacity. Now, that's never happened, but I know for a fact that if I was one of those employees, I would absolutely be held accountable. If I lost my iPad all the time, I'd have to pay for my iPad. If I parked an expensive parking base at $80 a pop, Instead of fifteen dollars, I would app. They would, app, they would say, "No, nah, we're not paying for it. It's fifteen dollars max." The, the client manager who's processing the expense claim at fifteen dollars. That's all they're going to pay you. You should have got it approved as to why you need to go in that eighty dollar parking bay. So that's the general idea. Is I'm held responsible through something that I've already agreed upon, and then it's technically outsourced to the client manager. So how angry can I be at the client manager when she goes, "Well, let's just say," and I did actually have this happen where. Pretty much, something wasn't going to get paid because I didn't want to do the admin. And I spoke to the client manager and I said, hey, you better or else I'll do it. And that was years <laughs> ago when I was a bit inauthentic. They said, well, the boss told me not to process this through. So heads up. So it's your responsibility. You can do it if you want. So, okay, what are my options there? I could either go to the boss and say, pay me, pay me. Or I could go to Fair Work and say, it's unfair. I didn't get paid for this one little thing. So those two options are not very good options because I've already promised something, I've accepted the responsibilities or I should have, and that's a condition of employment because the company's really, really good with their benefits and their structure and all that sort of stuff. You just feel guilty, so you never do it. So sick days, nearly six years now, zero sick days. Legend. But it's not so much that. It's just pretty much it's honesty. Honesty leads to trust, leads to value, leads to responsibility, leads to performance, and, and... Somehow, our brilliant managing director, Ed, he's just, just got in spades. He's got in himself. He commands the best of other people. Let, let's say, I was a sinner, and now I've changed. Sure. He, got me, he got me clean. Because I didn't, I didn't know what the truth was, in the sense that when I'm doing financial planning, sorry, ANZ Bank says, here's exactly what the best investments are for you. Yeah. And the key person insurance is most appropriate, and these are the reasons. So that's how I did it, right? Whatever the bank says is appropriate for you, and that's just what it is and here's just SOA and let's read it together and that's what the fees are. <laughs> so obviously, I, I wasn't a fantastic financial planner. Adrian uh, hates the bank so like, obviously, you know. <laughs> Benny I was, the big I, bank basher. I was the perfect, perfect bank <laughs> robot but anyway, the perfect bank robot and the results were fine as well as good as they could have been as a transactional vulture <laughs> eating, 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 eating off the carcass of small businesses and the key, key person insurance. It sort of is a bit like that, right? It's a bit like that. I don't know. I've never been in a big bank, so it's, it's a bit like that. Wow. I felt, no, I mean, and I didn't think that way at the time. Oh, it's I never the person. Thought, it's the system, man. It's the system. No, I think what he's saying both. is it's the person. I think he's saying be authentic. Oh, That's his whole okay. point, man. Yeah. So I you're mean, taking ownership for, yeah. I shouldn't have been like that. I shouldn't have been like that. You Fair fucking enough. vulture, Chris. I, I shouldn't have been like that. And, uh, and it's, it's one of those things where, well, the funny thing is, though, I was doing planning for two years yeah. in, from 2008 to 2010. All of my clients got rich. Every single one of them. Because it it was the bottom of the market. The market dropped. Right. And I was like, yo, boom. Killing it. That is fun. Superannuation. Here you go. I'll talk you out. Bang, 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 bang. See you later. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, sorry. But so technically speaking. Oh, no. There's a good reason why um, a lot of advisors don't base their value proposition on investments anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) There's a flip side. Yeah. On the opposite side, it takes a lot of trust and responsibility and commitment. And thank goodness... I didn't have that in spades. So if, if it had been the opposite, I would have been a goner. 
It's like, in other words, I would have had the trust and availability, but it's a different... You have to be so much more honest and authentic. Um, have you uh, read the book Selling with a Noble Purpose? Or no. Selling with Sounds a Noble like Cause need to, or something? No, no, no. But I feel like you kind of espouse a lot of that stuff. You, you've come out the other side. Because, okay. because, because selling, <laughs> to, to me, selling is a tool. Um, and if if you if you sell well or if you sell horribly, that's one thing. But as long as you deliver, right? So... I love a great salesperson if they deliver Absolutely. an excellent mm. result. So I am all for getting really good at sales, but only getting really good at sales is junk. So if you can get really good at sales and then deliver a really good outcome for a client, I I like I'll applaud it's huge, isn't it? I'll huge. applaud the salesperson. I'm like Thank you for selling me because I received what it, your complete and remarkable solution. I love a good salesperson when they do it well. And obviously, I hate a great salesman if they deliver shit, right? So, so, so that uh, you kind of, I don't know, my journey through uh, financial planning is uh, I, I came from tax accounting and then I was in this sort of uh, legislation advice team for like a year before I ever then went to learn about insurances and, and investments, which is where, you know, all the commissions were. And I felt really dirty the first time I sold. I was like, ugh, you know, like just I, I, I could, I was like, oh, I, ha- I hated selling it. And then you, you, you move through that and then if you're selling well and delivering well, oh man, that is such a great result to provide. And also, I love, I love paying when I when I get sold and I'm delivered something excellent. I love it as well. I'm like, yes, you love it. It's yep. that love. Like even yep. I, I use the example. I'll pay a steak, whatever it costs, as long as it's delivered, and I love it. Yeah. And obviously, if I don't love the steak, hopefully the service has been fantastic, but I'm always willing to pay premium. But what I hate is when you get the, the dirty overquotes or the underquotes, and then the service is rubbish. Yeah. That's the mm. worst. Yeah. But you're right. When you have a good steak, it doesn't matter what you pay for it. Yes. I, iPhone. iPhone is totally, an amazing. Man. Look, I'm all for iPhone. They came in. They knew there was going to be bugs, yep. but it was going to be the best experience I've ever had, yep. and that's exactly right. So... Yes, it could have been better. I don't agree maybe with the bugs afterwards. But that being said, you're willing to pay anything. Yeah. GFC, doesn't matter. You're, you know, you're going, can I, afford, can I afford the dinner here? Can I do this? But in fact, you're just going to fork over a thousand bucks for a brand new phone. Not even think about it. Totally. Because you 1300 know. 1300 these days. Yeah. Is it 1300? Sure. And because you, you know what experience you're going to get on it. And because it's so good, you're absolutely willing to pay. And I 100% agree. And that's why in financial planning, in hindsight, Um, That's exactly what's most important to a financial planning relationship. So I didn't fully understand that at the time because I wasn't consciously thinking about it, but I still over-delivered nearly every single time, which was helpful. But in hindsight, the trusting relationship, the fixed fee model, that's super important. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> is that a oh, vulture? That's a vulture. vulture. That's a vulture on the carcass. <laughs> oh, like a vulture. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so, I did, I did. In hindsight, I was like, oh, man, was I like that? Was I not? And then, you know, what is, what is, what is, is. Yeah. I mean, you, you, so everyone's sell, got their journey. So sell like a boss, which is mad, but then over deliver. On the promise, give something. Yeah, awesome. and then uh, and then so to to wrap up this awesome uh, Friday afternoon, um, how can people learn about more about you and your company and your books and and all that sort of thing? Yeah, so um, my my name's Chris Medell. I'm on LinkedIn. I uh, employ for the company I work for, employ for external HR for small business. Um, yeah, hit up the website www.employshore.com.au. Alternatively, give me a call directly. Um, all of my details are on LinkedIn. But, um, yeah, really, really fantastic resource for a small business and for financial planning firms. And if you need any advice whatsoever for anything, you don't need to become a member. You just need to give me a call. And so, you guys have got a bunch of stuff on your site as well, right? Like there's like free free resources and stuff, Heaps yeah? and heaps of free yeah, resources. That stuff you sent me. Best practice yeah. guides, um, downloadable tools. And we, we offer free consultations as well. So pretty much where myself or an equivalent would come out Say, so here's, what, here's what you got in place. Here's what you need. We send it via email, send a quote for our membership, and then you get the choice whether you do it yourself or you get us to do it for you. 
Yeah. So it's really, really fantastic. But for anything cool. at all, obviously I've, I've had the experience with financial planning as well. So if there's any financial planning firms out there that need a bit of advice about those contracts or contracts agreement, just give me a call. And as you can tell, clearly very good banter. If, uh, if yeah. You can, if yeah, it was so. really good, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Chris. Thanks, guys. Cool. Yeah, thanks. Woo. Hey. Just guess.